You are now listening to the Curtis King Podcast. What's going on with you and welcome to another episode of the Curtis King Podcast. I am your host, Curtis King. If this is your first time watching and or listening, just know this is a podcast dedicated specifically to music creators, creatives, and thinkers alike. First and foremost, we got to say thank you to the sponsor of this podcast, which is DistroKid. You'll learn a little bit more about them towards the halfway point. The topic today is going to be centered around changing your perspective on the numbers that you're currently getting. A very specific set of metrics and numbers is what I'm referring to. Your views, your likes, your shares, subscribers, followers. I think that Many of us have only one type of perspective when it comes to those numbers. They're either low or they're high, right? And I think that that undercuts the huge opportunity that you have to make an impact if you're already jaded because you're not seeing more people supporting what you're doing. I think that that is a perspective issue that is stopping you from growing. Today's video won't be like one of, one of those YouTube videos that you see where they say, how to grow your audience from zero to 5,000 in 30 days. No, that's not what, it, what this is today. <laughs> I know you see those videos as you, they pop up on your timeline too. This is not that. This is pride and in independence, pride in the value of one. I think a lot of people overlook what you could do in terms of your impact with the people who are currently watching right now. And I want to, by the end of this episode, help you put that into perspective. There is a portion of this book that I want to read to you from Tribes. We need you to lead us by Seth Golden once again. But he talks about how do you create a movement, which is what I think most artists and producers are trying to create when they're thinking about, OK, how do I get more listeners? How do I get more people to my shows? How do I get more people on my email list? How do I get more people sharing my music and supporting what I'm doing? You're trying to create a movement. There's a difference between telling people what to do and inciting a movement. The movement happens when people talk to one another, when ideas spread within the community, and most of all, when peer support leads people to do what they always knew was the right thing. He continues, great leaders create movements by empowering the tribe to communicate. They establish the foundation for people to make connections as opposed to commanding people to follow them. Some of y'all need to read that last line over again. Or you need to repeat this video and I'll read it to you. It is not your job to be the center focus of everything in these people's lives that support you. I think that that's stopping you from growing. I think that you don't see it and maybe they don't pick up on it consciously. But the message is me, 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 me. Support me. I'm great. Did you hear what I just did? Oh, y'all are sleeping on me. That message is preventing you from growing because you're not seeing what your role is as the leader of the people that you brought together. Yes, you are a very important piece to the reason why this listener from New York or this listener from Florida even know one another. Like you're a very important piece to that, but you're not the only piece. Something that comes to mind is something that happened years ago that I thought was a prime example of what we're talking about. Hobson, when he was on tour, was doing this thing where he would put up on Twitter that he was going to be at a local skate park in the area and he was going to challenge a fan to playing this game called skate, which is like the basketball equivalent of playing horse. And he did this without security, without it being this whole hoopla or looking like this promotional campaign. He just did it on some normal stuff. My man was out there shirtless, like really looking like if you didn't know who he was with those contacts, he was just looking like another skater out there. And he put himself amongst the people. And the thing that you don't see whenever, because this video on YouTube that show him doing this, what you don't see is the interactions that happen from people that didn't even know they were in the same city and both had a huge fandom of Hobson. Such a genius idea to bring all these folks together because they're now going to be in touch with each other and probably say, hey, did you see that Hobson dropped this? But even more important than what they could do for you, think about what you being the person that brought them together does for them. It connects them with other people who are just like them, who think like them. And that's most of our friends. Anyways, our best friends are either people we aspire to be like or people that were just alike. We see things the same exact way. A lot of us need to have a heart to heart with ourselves. I've had many of heart to heart with myself, especially when it comes to this YouTube channel, because there's some days where I look at 
the 230,000 subscribers that I have, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm enormously grateful. That's more than some stadiums can hold. <laughs> but then there's another part of me that says, okay, 230,000, I just dropped a new video. Where are you at? Where you at? Where's the, where's the commentary? Where's the engagement? Yo, what's going on with my views? And in our culture, it becomes very dangerous to use that as your center focus because there's certain terms that come to mind like falling off. There's certain terms that come to mind like your time is over, right? And these are never the full truths. So I had to refocus myself and understand the concepts that are in this book is that it's not about me. It's not about my content. It's not about my music. It's about my community communing. You don't have a community, my friends, if your community is not talking to one another, if your community is not interested in one another. You don't have a community. You have an assorted group of people. But if they don't have a reason or even an environment to come together, a discord, a Patreon, how else are they going to understand what they have in common or how else are they going to be able to connect with one another? Now, some of you are probably listening to this and saying this is great advice. I'll deal with it when I have a fan base. I think that's also very dangerous. I think that so many of you have people that are supporting you, but because it's not a million people, because it's not a thousand people, because it's not a hundred people, you look at those folks in a different light. Not that you're judging them, but you're looking at the group as in, oh my gosh, this is reflective of my influence. This is reflective of the fact that nobody is, is rocking with me. It's not a fact, but you know, I'm just saying the fact that we say that sometimes. You're looking at these numbers as being a extension of your worth. And if you are doing that, one, you should stop. But two, you should also take another look at those numbers. I got a breakdown right now that I hope is going to change your perspective. And I want to start from a number like 71. Some of you right now, have music that you're not putting out because your last video had 71 views. Some of you are not posting up on Instagram because you didn't get more than 71 likes. You know what also has in common with that number 71? Chipotle. Most Chipotles have a capacity of 71 people. Have you ever gone to a busy Chipotle? <laughs> have you seen how chaotic it can be for the workers to keep up with the orders, not to mention that 71 doesn't include the employees. How about 84? Oh, man, my instrumental, my, my song only got 84 listeners and like one or two comments. You know what else has that has that in common? Rounding out from 42 people standing and 40 pe 42 people sitting. Denny's has an average max capacity occupancy of 84 people. Have you ever seen a Denny's with 84 people? Have you seen how chaotic that is? Do you see how much work it is for the workers and servers to keep up with them? And it's not just one person. Hello. Grocery stores have a max average occupancy of 200 people. Now, look at those 200 views that you got on that piece of content that you thought was not being heard, being slept on. One time I've been in a grocery store where it might have been max uh, uh, capacity. And that was one of the first news of the pandemic occurred. It, it, it looked like the apocalypse almost in there. <laughs> I'm going to share some more numbers, but I'm going to explain to you why I'm making this comparison. A stretch limo. For those of you that have ever been in a stretch limo. Bougie, fancy, huh? 14 people. Think about how packed that is. Think about all the different opinions going around in there. Oh, my God, I don't drink. You don't drink. What's wrong with you? Oh, man, I just want to go home. Oh, my God, you got to have a good old time. Oh, I just want to. I just, I just I'm missing her right now. Think about all the opinions of 14 different people. A cruise ship, the average cruise ship, 6,000 people. I've had videos of that that did 6,000, and I was like, ah, I just really thought it was going to do 10 or 15,000. You ungrateful head ass. That's a cruise ship. Have you seen how big a cruise ship is? The Airbus A380, which is the largest passenger plane ever. 850 people. 850 people. Could you imagine being a stewardess on that plane? Could you imagine being the person that has to maintain the bathrooms? <laughs> That's nuts. Now, for those of you a little bit higher on the totem pole, this imaginary totem pole, let's say you got 85,000 streams, but you're looking at that person that got a million and you're like, man, I wish I got a million, you know? Do you know that the max occupancy of Disneyland is 85,000 people? Have you been at a Disneyland when it was max occupancy? Not likely that you have, but if you have, do you remember how chaotic it was? Disneyland averages 51,000 people. That's daily. 
And I feel like it's busy every time my family and I visit Disneyland. The reason I share these numbers are hopefully so that you can see those live streams that you're doing that get only quotation marks, only five to 10 people. Do you know I cannot fit five people in here comfortably? I've tried. (laughs) 10 people would be nuts. It would be hot and humid in here. Trying to take care of them and make sure. Do you have water? Uh, Did you finish writing to the beat? Okay. Oh, you want to get food? Let me go hit up DoorDash. Would be a lot to keep up with. Meanwhile, here you are with 10 listeners and you can't think of something else to do to support them. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to grow from here. How about focusing on the people that are already there? How about, it's just an idea, (laughs) seeing what their needs are. Seeing what they come to your product for. They're in need of inspiration. Okay. How about aligning them with other people that can be accountability partners that just so happen to be mutual listeners of yours? How about actually seeing why they resonate so deeply with your music and seeing other ways that you could provide them value on a regular basis? What about being so locked into those 10 people that they tell 10 people, not because you asked them to, but because they are so overjoyed by the value that you give them, they can't help but tell someone else. They can't keep it inside. We don't pour into the power of one person. We don't believe in the power of one. We have all these excuses. Oh, they're only supporting because they're my family. They're only supporting because, you know, they think I'm cute. They only supporting because of my one zone. Only supporting? Maybe you haven't been given more people because you're not ready to handle more people. Maybe because you're not showing grace for the audience that you're currently getting. What reason would you need more? You don't know how to handle the ones you already have. None of my sound like a lesson that your grandmama didn't told you at one point in time. Because my grandmama told me that. Why would I buy you new shoes? You can't take care of the ones you got on right now. Hello. Why should God bless you with more fans and you can't even show the ones that you have the respect that they're due? They're here early. They're at the beta phase of your career. You can't stop to think of how you can provide them an extreme amount of value. Give us some thought. We're going to go to commercial break. and We'll be right back after we hear a word from our sponsor. Distro Kid. Music producer. Something I talk about pretty frequently is the necessity of having multiple streams of revenue as an independent music producer. Not only for when you're actually producing, but what about those days after you stop producing? You got to make sure that you have streams of revenue that are going to live on even further than your current career. That being said, one stream of revenue that I think gets often overlooked is music distribution, aka streaming. Getting your music on Apple Music, getting your music on Spotify, etc, etc. Now, the number one spot that I go to to make sure that I distribute my music properly and ensure that I get my music to every store possible is DistroKid at DistroKid.com. I know you've heard me speak about it multiple times on my YouTube channel, but I got to tell you, there's a reason why it's the number one that I go to. For $19.99 per year, I can upload an unlimited amount of music throughout the year. As producers, you know we make an abnormal amount of music in comparison to songs that get created, so it's important that you use this as a consistent stream of income. If you'd like to sign up to DistroKid today and get your music to every major distributor go to distrokid.com forward slash vip forward slash curtis king to get seven percent off all right thank you so much distro kid for powering this podcast now i didn't come here to beat up on you i didn't come up here to point my finger and, and agitate you without having some kind of a solution but i do think it's important that if you're stuck quote unquote stuck at a certain number that we change our perspective from i only have to i have been blessed with whatever that number is Too many of us are so focused on the future and there's nothing wrong with having aspirations and goals, but I think we're so focused on the future blessings that we can't see the blessings that are sitting in front of us and how to take care of them. And I'm sharing this with you as someone who has walked that road and done that before. I had a huge fan base on MySpace at one point in time, showing my age, before I knew what to do with a fan base. I never got their emails. I never created any kind of benefits to following my music outside of my music. I didn't know that that was a thing. But you got to think if huge corporations like Barnes and Noble and McDonald's and all these things that service a lot of people all have seasons in which they take care of their members or they have bonus points like Costco bonus periods where the people who have been holding them down get some extra benefits. Why do you think you're above that? And I'm not just talking about bonuses as in discounts on your products. That's still serving you. How are you serving the people that are there for you? We're in a different era. 
The expectation is different now. There is a time that you can get away with just being tight as hell at music. It's not enough anymore. I look at an artist like LaRussell, one of my favorite stories of independence in this era that I like to call, you know, rest in peace of Shock G, the digital underground. We're really in the digital underground where we have the advantage of being independent, having the flexibility, having autonomy in our art, but also we have the tools like the internet and cameras, like the one that's scrolling right now on me, to fully take advantage of this time period and to spread our message in the most clear way that we know how on many different platforms in many different ways. It is a blessing to be alive now, but LaRusso is such a great example of it because if you didn't know, he's throwing shows in his backyard in the Bay. And folks like Chance the Rapper are tweeting at him like, yo, I got to come pull up on you and see this in person. This is independence at its best. He has family members in the house that are putting together merchandise because they believe in this business. They believe in, in, in him and what they're building. But once again, he has created an environment in which people can come together in his backyard. But it's not about him. There's other artists that perform. There are opportunities for people in the city to say, oh, how long you been listening to him? OK, what part of the city are you from? Hey, that's dope. Like, I had a good time here with you. You want to link up? He gave his community an opportunity to commune, to talk to one another. And you need to create that somehow, some way with what you have. You cannot wait till you get 100,000 people and think that you're going to magically know how to treat those people. You better do it now where the risk taking is a lot lower. If you don't have a large audience, you are in a blessed position because you can take some risk. You can ask some questions and see how people react to them. Nowadays, especially with cancel culture and having the wrong things that you've said in your past go supremely viral and then having to backtrack or apologize or figuring out how you're going to maneuver that in this space. Having a smaller fan base gives you an opportunity to make mistakes and try things and see people's comfortability with doing certain things. If I had 10 fans right now, first thing I'm doing is getting their email, thanking them, first of all, thank you so much, but getting their email because I want to talk to them and I want to thank them personally. This is not about trying to sell them on any product. No, no, this is just about talking to them and thanking them first and foremost and learning about them. And some of the questions that I would ask is, how did you find my music? What are you resonating with? In what ways does my music help you? And in what areas do you think that you need help in? You say that my music is motivation. Would motivational videos by me be a little bit helpful to what you got going on? Yeah, that'd be super dope, man. We'd love to hear that. You won't know until you ask them. But if I had 10 people, I'm talking to those 10 people on the phone. I'm talking to them if I know them in person. And I'm really getting to know what drives them. And I want to know more than just what they feel about me. I want to know about their day to days. What do you do for a living? Are you still in school or what's your major? Having these specifics will help you to create a profile, an imaginary person, an avatar that will help you as you start to draft out your emails, because now you're speaking a very specific way where they're like, damn, I feel like you're talking to me. How many times have you guys watched a video from me and either left a comment or thought to yourself, I feel like he was talking exactly to me. You know why that is? It's not because I'm some kind of psychic or anything like that. It's because I listen. I listen all the time. Sometimes I listen too well. In listening too well, that means you're going to listen to not just the positive, but also the negative. I've come to a place now in my 37th year where I'm able to look at the negative in a different light and say, though the delivery could have been different, and though I don't agree with the way or the words that you're using, could there be some truth in what is being said? You got to be able to back up and look at the duality of it and be honest with yourself if you truly want to grow, first of all, as a human being, but if you also want to grow your following. A lot of people do what I have done in the past and what I had to stop myself from doing when I'm listening which is hyper focusing on just the negative. It's important that you do try to get whatever truth that you can from that, but that you don't hyper focus so much on the negative that you miss the people that are here for you. They're giving you all the clues of how to find more of them. They're allowing you into their world. They're letting you see their profile. They're taking pictures of the food that they're eating. <laughs> They're giving you thoughtful ideas of maybe things that you could do at some point in time to support what they're doing in their lives. Why should someone support you if you're not even willing to show up for them in their proudest moments? Why do you think that you're owed their attention, but you don't have to give them any attention? These are people that need you in a different way. For those of you that are sitting right now on these numbers and you're discouraged by what you got going on, it's time to just show up now.
you got angry about it. Maybe some of y'all have cried about it. Maybe you have put your value on it, your manhood on it, your womanhood on it. You beat yourself up enough. Now it's time to stand on what you have and stop comparing it to other people and work with what you have. Maximize what you have. Understand what you have. And if you only have two or three listeners, two or three followers, it's really easy. Talk to them. You'd be surprised how open they are to hearing from you. But if they don't even know that they've been seen or that their feedback is of value, why should they engage with you? Believe in the power of one. Invest into that person. Pour into them. And do it not because you want to grow a bunch of other people like them. Do it because you mean it. And then the craziest thing happens. Feels like magic almost. More people join. Because they see the treatment that you're giving them. Once again, that was another episode of the Curtis King podcast. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I know this is the only long form, long form content here on the YouTube channel, uh, as opposed to the live stream, which is every Tuesday at 4 p.m. called Flocation. We would love to see you there. But what do you think? I would love to get your feedback in the comments. What do you think is stopping you from growing? What do you think stops other people from growing? Maybe you're a fan or a listener of someone else. What are they doing that is not showing you that you matter? What are they doing that is not nurturing the relationship? What are your tips for growing? Maybe you do have an audience. What is your tip for growing and nurturing the audience that you do have? We would love to hear it down there below in the comments. Comments. Thank you once again to our sponsor, DistroKid. And like I always say in this life, you will not be full of life until you decide to live life to its absolute fullest. Once again, this is Curtis King at the Curtis King Podcast. Have a good one.